Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating this interesting style pattern in Adobe Illustrator. Not quite as easy as it might look. We're going to start with a new file. I'm going to create one that's a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. I suggest that you create a file about the same size as mine and I do suggest that at least the first time you do this pattern that you stick with my measurements just because it might be a little bit easier. So I'm going to start by clicking the ellipse tool. I'm going to set this so that it has a sort of green color and a black outline. I'm going to click once in the document and I'm going to make a circle that is 200 pixels by 200 pixels. I'm going to increase my stroke to four points and I'm going to make sure that my stroke is on the inside of my shape. That's just going to make life a whole lot easier for you. So there are options here for where you align your stroke to and we're going to put it on the inside. I'm going to the selection tool. I'm going to select over my shape, just move it where I can see it. Hold down the Alt key. I'm going to drag two copies of it away. The first one I'm going to drag in a horizontal direction. I'm going to make sure that these two line up. So let's just select over them. And from the align options, we're just going to vertically align the center actor. I've got this set to, by the looks of it, to align to the artboard. Yes, it is here, but you can set it to align to selection. And that's just going to make sure that when we align them, they're centered relative to each other. I'm going to take a third shape. So hold down the Alt key, drag on this shape. And I'm going to position this so that it is right in the middle of these other two shapes. If you need to be 100% sure, you can select over these shapes and go to View and then Outline View. We're just going to have a look in Outline View to make sure that the anchor points here, there is just one set of anchor points. So these are lined up perfectly and they look really good to me. So I'm just going to choose View and back to GPU Preview. To get it down to the size where I can see everything on the screen, Control and Zero. I'm going to keep this selection of all of these objects and go over here to pick up the Shape Builder tool. It shares a toolbar position with the Live Paint Bucket and the Live Paint Selection tool. It's Shape Builder that we want. Now we want one shape out of this and this is the shape here. So I'm just going to drag over this to make that one shape. I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key and I'm going to drag over these other shapes because I need to get rid of them. So this is the shape I want to keep working with. I'm going to open up the transform panel with window and then transform. And we need to make sure that this shape is exactly this dimension. It needs to be 200 pixels by 200 pixels. That's why I suggested to you that you use the same values as I do because it's going to give you a really good visual check that things are actually working as they should be. If it's not the right size, go back and start again because something has gone wrong. So let's have a look at what we're going to do next. We're going to the Direct Selection tool. I'm going to click away from the shape. I'm going to drag over just this top part of the shape. I'm going to choose Edit Copy and then Edit Paste. So what this does is it just makes a copy of this top loop here because that's going to give me a reference for making a pattern that's going to go inside this shape. So I'm going to zoom into this area here so we can see what we're doing. So I'm going to click away from my shape so I don't have it selected. I'm going back to my ellipse tool. I'm going to select it. I'm going to set white as my fill color. I've got a stroke of four points which it's inheriting from the previous shape. So I'm going to drop this down to probably two. I'm going to draw out a small circle. I'm going to select with the direct selection tool again. This time I'm going to select this anchor point at the very bottom. So I'm just selecting over it. And up here on the control bar, I'm going to convert the selected anchor point to a corner. That makes a sort of teardrop shape. And now I'm going to drag it out so it looks a little bit more like a teardrop and probably smoosh it up a little bit because it's looking just a little bit big. So I'm going to bring it over here and place it on top of the shape that we're working with. I'm going to select over both of them and again back to the align tools, I want to make sure that these are centered. So I want to horizontally align their centers. I'm going to select the shape and then I'll choose Effect, Distort and Transform and then Transform. The reason I'm using this particular tool is it allows us to make multiple shapes to rotate and move them at the same time. As far as the rotation is concerned, I want to rotate around this direction. So I'm going to start with 15 degrees. I'm going to move this shape horizontally. So let's just 
pull it in a horizontal direction, but we need to go in a negative horizontal direction. This would be a positive direction, this is a negative direction. I'm going to try and make that a round value, so let's go to 30. I need to move it down a little bit, so we'll be using a positive value. Let's increase the number of copies, and now we can see that our vertical movement is not enough, and so I'm just going to increase that. And my rotation's not enough either. So I'm just looking for a nice arrangement of these shapes inside this other shape. And when I achieve something I like, I'm just going to click OK. And then I'm going to expand this with Object and Expand Appearance. I'm now going to take this entire object and flip it over. So it's still selected, I'm going to choose Object Transform and then Reflect. That's going to reflect it. This time I'm going over the vertical. I want my original plus this copy, so I'm just going to click here on Copy. And now the top copied version is selected, so I'm just going to move it into position. We're going to work out what move it into position means because I just need to place these two shapes over the top of each other. I think they're close enough there. Now I'm going to the Group Selection tool because these are embedded inside a group. Click on the Group Selection tool, click on this topmost shape, go back to select the Selection tool which makes sure that this shape is selected and I'll just delete it. So now I've got the elements that I need to put over in here. So let's go and get this green bit and we can just remove it. I'm going to check in the Layers palette and see what I've got. Well, I've got two sets of shapes here, so I'm going to grab the pieces from the second set of shapes and just move them into the first. It's just going to neaten things up a little bit. There's just one collection of shapes that we're going to be using. And now I'm just going to drag these over here. Now because these are in a group, we can just select over everything and we could use this horizontal align center just to make sure that the shapes inside the shape are lined up perfectly with it, which they are now. I'm seeing a little bit of a double line here. I'm going to fix that before I leave here. Let's just go and see if we can see what the cause of that is. Here, I've got two shapes here, so there's a bit left over from the previous element that I deleted. I obviously didn't delete everything, so I'm just going to grab it and put it on the trash can. If you see anything wrong with this, just have a look inside the layers palette before you go any further, just to make sure you're on the right track. Again, Control and Zero to just center everything up. I'm going to grab all of these shapes now, so I've got all the little white ones in a group, and the overall sort of fan shape is a separate shape. I'm going to group these with Object Group. It's just going to make it easy to get everything lined up. So we're ready to make our pattern now, but before we actually go to the pattern tool, we're going to need some more of these shapes. So now that they're in a group, I'm going to hold down the Alt key as I drag a duplicate of this shape away, and I'm going to rotate it. So I'm just rotating it around holding the Shift key, so it's rotating a perfect 180 degrees. Then I'm going to move it up so that it's just touching the top of this other shape. With both these shapes selected, because the top one was 200 and the bottom one is 200, we should have them reading 300 pixels. They're not, they're slightly too wide and they're slightly too tall, which tells me things are slightly out. So let's just center them, make sure they're centered, which they weren't previously, and let's just move them apart just one pixel to make them read 200 by 400. That's critical because again, we want this thing to line up perfectly. And because we've got shapes that are 200 by 200 in size, we know exactly how big they should be when they're correctly aligned on top of each other, for example. Let's select over all of these shapes, Alt, drag a duplicate away. We're going to rotate this collection, so I'm going to hold the Shift key as I rotate these around 180 degrees. This piece here is going in here, and this piece is going over here, and that's the key to this pattern. So let's just move them into position, and let's check the overall size. Here we have a shape that's 400 pixels by 400 pixels. Again, this shape is 200 pixels, so is this one, if they're lined up exactly to each other, then they should be 400 wide. These two shapes, exactly the same. So I've got an object that is the perfect size for my pattern. I know everything is perfect. So let's go and make our pattern with it selected. I'm going to choose Object, Pattern, Make, 
For the pattern, I'm going to set this to brick by row with a half offset, and that positions things exactly where they should be. They're just not close enough to each other. Well, we're just going to wind the height into 200. If you type 200 in there, your pattern's going to be perfect. Let's just take this to nine by nine. This setting here, nine by nine, is just how many we see on the screen. It's got nothing to do with the pattern at all. I'm just going to zoom out so that we can double check to make sure that everything looks good, and it does. So I'm going to click Done. I'll move this shape out of the way. Let's create a rectangle that's the size of our artboard. In my case, it's a thousand by a thousand. I'll center it up on the artboard. I'm going to turn the stroke off and I'm going to focus just on the fill. Let's go to the swatches panel and let's add our pattern. Now at this point, there's a couple of things that we could do. Let's go back to the original shape because we know that this is going to make a perfect pattern. Let me just go and select over everything. I'm going to make a duplicate of this by just alt dragging the copy away. Let's go to the layers palette. The one that I have selected is this one here. So for each of these groups, I'm going to turn off visibility of the bit in the middle. In fact, I could even delete the bit in the middle. For clarity, I'm going to select over all of these shapes. I'm going to ungroup them and then I'm going to regroup them. So they're just in a single group. Now we know that this is going to make a pattern as well. So object pattern, make. Let's do exactly the same as we did before with a brick by row with a half offset and the height is 200 because the pattern piece is identical and we'll just click done. So we've got a second pattern here in the swatches dialog. Let's have a look and see how we would recolor this easily. I have the shape selected. I'm going to the recolor artwork tool. I'll click on it once. I'll click here on advanced options. You may or may not have these colors available to you. If you don't have a color picker here, make sure you click on here so it becomes an arrow and then click here to add your color. You need a white and a black. At this point, I suggest that you open this color up and that you change these two colors. They're just a little bit difficult to pick up if they're white and black, but they're easy to pick up if they're colors. So then you're going straight into edit. I'm going to unlock these so the colors can travel independently of each other. And now we can see where the colors are. We've got the color that is the line work. We've got the color that is in the middle here. And then we've got the color that's the background. When you find a color combination that you like, click OK, and that will make a new pattern with that coloring. Going back into the Recolor Artwork dialog, back into Advanced Options, back into Edit. When you've got a sort of arrangement of colors that you like here, you may want to link the Harmony colors. At the moment, they are linked. And then you can just drag these around, but because that's going to give you colors that are in the sort of same spatial arrangement, and you're more likely to find color combinations that you like. Every time you find one, just click OK, adds a new pattern to the pattern swatches, and you can come back in, go back into Edit, and find another combination of these colors that's going to work well for you. You can also drag in and out on these colors without changing the spatial relationship. You're just changing tones and shades here. This is a really pretty shape pattern to make and you can obviously do a whole lot of things with whatever it is that you have inside these fan shapes when making the pattern. Also, because the pattern is made up of four individual shapes, you could change colors here of the individual shapes to get variety in your design. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.